Having a truck like this enables you to go out and see things like this. Okay, Google, take me to Rite Aid. Right aid 0.7 miles away. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. This week we've got the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. Now, initially, when, when I got the truck booked, it wasn't even supposed to be a Colorado, it was supposed to be a Wrangler, the new 24 Wrangler, but some things got shuffled around and we got this instead. And I'm just totally happy to review it because I haven't driven the new Colorado yet. I've driven the Canyon, but not this Colorado. And I've always been a fan of the Colorado. I, I, yeah, I like trucks in general. And so I was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's do it. And initially I was like, well, you know, we gotta go take it off road and we gotta try out all the, the two inch lift and the Wrangler all terrain tires and everything. But then I was like, how do, how do people typically use their truck? How do I typically use the trucks that I have? Well, it's for life. It's for normal errand running and, and uh, living your life with your family and, and, and the people involved in it. So that's what we're going to do with the Colorado Trail Boss. We're still going to go take it on some trails and we're still going to kind of see how it handles that stuff. But we're also going to see how it handles uh, normal day to day. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to surprise my wife Alyssa with a picnic. Yeah, I know, right? Big truck, big, big truck stuff going on a picnic. We're gonna use the, the five foot bed here and we're gonna have a blanket and we're going to sit in the back and we're actually gonna go up some mountains. If we can see them way off in the distance there. We're gonna go up some mountains and we're gonna do a surprise picnic. We're actually not gonna tell Alyssa that there's picnic stuff in the back. So I'm going to go home and make some picnic supplies and we're gonna see if we can hide it back here which I think we should be able to. These seats flip up and we should be able to, well, there's not a ton of storage under there. I feel like previous Colorado used to have more, but I bet we can hide something back here uh, to make it so that she doesn't know that we've got picnic supplies. We're gonna, we're gonna just tell her that, yeah, I just wanted to go for a little, little drive with the truck and see what it's capable of and do a little off-road filming. But then once we get to the top of the mountain, it's gonna be uh, hopefully just before sunset and we're gonna have a little sunset picnic. Now, maybe if we had a ridge line or something like that, then we'd have the little bed storage container and we could put stuff in there. We do have a little bit of bed storage, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to actually store anything useful. You've got a ruler back here, which isn't gonna help me. Also wouldn't help me with going to the grocery store or getting my hair cut or any of the other things I did today. We do have a little something something here. So if I needed to, to hide some things back there, I guess I could. Let's seal that back up. I've already done a little bit of lifestyle with the truck. I put my mountain bike in the back and did some mountain biking and actually scraped up my hand a little bit and, and my legs a bit and stuff too. But I've actually really enjoyed driving the Colorado around town. I mean, that's, that's what's been the story for me is I like the way it looks, despite uh, the one thing Chris Brower would love to point out how awkwardly high up the name badge that is there on the middle of the door. Isn't that kind of strange? But other than that, I think the styling looks good. I think I, I, I like having the lift on there. I mean, so many people like lifting up their trucks anyway, and it's smart for Chevy to have done it right from the factory. And this Trail Boss Edition's kind of neat because it actually only costs $41,000. I expected it to cost quite a bit more. I mean, new cars cost so much these days that if I got a window sticker for this truck and it said, oh, it costs $53,000, I'd be like, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of typical, isn't it? Some things you are missing, though, because it is such an inexpensive truck, is you don't get any proxy key. So walking up to unlock the truck, you still have to get your key out. Uh, but you can at least push button start it after that. They didn't have a normal, normal key, so that's good at least. And no automatic climate control, which I don't really mind. You just kind of twist those and set the temp you want. Power seats still for the driver's seat, so that's good. Manual seats for the passenger though, right? Yeah, manual adjustments for the passenger. It's a cloth, but I, it's, it's a nice cloth. I'm totally okay with the material. The one material I'm maybe not quite as okay with is the rubber that the steering wheel is. I'm not totally against rubber steering wheels at this price point, but the weird thing, there's actually some sharp bits right around here that 
stick out and, and hit your fingers. I don't much care for that. I do love, though, how you still get a fantastic infotainment screen. This is one of my favorite infotainment screens on the market. In fact, we've got a dedicated breakdown that I'm going to shoot later this week on how this infotainment works. But it's full-on uh, Android Automotive, and that means you get full-fledged Google Maps in here, and it works fantastically. Earlier today, I was just barking commands at it, and it, it works so well. You can even do things like mute your voice guidance just by saying mute voice guidance, and it works, and avoid tolls and things like that. It's so easy, so quick. Just for example, I'll do something like, hey Google, navigate to target. Okay, target 0.7 miles away. Look how easy that was. It's just fantastic how intuitive that is. I could take or leave this big digital gauge cluster screen. I mean, it shows you the revs and the speed. I guess I'm glad they didn't put some fake artificial uh, or analog speedometer in there because it would have just taken up extra space. But I'm going to get home and make up this picnic. We're going to see if we can kind of hide it in the car here and stuff. And then the next time, the next thing you'll see is some POV of us testing this thing out on some of the mountain uh, fire roads and trails and get up to the top and see what Alyssa thinks. Let's go. All right, picnic is coming together. We've got some croissants with peanut butter and apple slices. Of course, some trail mix, some crackers to go with some cheese. We're watching Alyssa's location so that we know when she leaves work and we can go pile everything into the Colorado and then we've got some cheese waiting we've got some drinks up there that we're going to be throwing in and we got the cooler staying nice and cool in the freezer so that uh, we can maybe make this a successful picnic is she leaving yet nope still hasn't budged we'll see if she figures out there's not a ton of room in the Colorado I already went in there to put the picnic blanket and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting, so we'll see. There's, what I mean is there's not a ton of room to hide things. Our Maverick actually has more room to hide things under the seat than the Colorado does. All right, she's on the way, so I've squished the cooler backpack a little bit underneath the seat. You can see here under the seats there still isn't that much room. I've got the uh, blanket kind of tucked under that one, but I really had to slam it down. So we're going to just kind of hope that we drop that that maybe I can put my camera bag on top and she won't be any the wiser. But yeah, not really not really too many places to put things. And I noticed they don't have the little seat back pockets in this one. So I don't know if they got rid of that for this generation or if you just can't get it here on the Trail Boss trim. In fact, not even any map pockets. It's kind of interesting. Look at that. It's just flat seats. Huh. All right, getting up here in some of the, the hills with the Colorado Trail Boss. <laughs> tracking a squirrel that we want to get out of the way because we wouldn't particularly enjoy running it over. Thoughts so far on riding shotgun, Alyssa? That's a real neat drive. Yeah? Yeah. What about the truck? <laughs> I do not have thoughts so far yet. Okay. Yeah, getting up here um, from the house, no, uh, no big surprises. I've been pretty happy with actually how quiet this truck is. For being a little bit more of a base model, it is pretty well insulated, and we'll see that more when we're out on kind of some of the road sections. But taking it up the hill here, this isn't going to have as advanced shocks as you'd get in something like the ZR2 or even the Z51. This has twin tube shocks, a little more basic. But what's important for kind of someone a little bit more casual in their exploring the way we are here or your kind of weekend activities is something just like that. Having this extra two inch lift makes it so I can kind of go through this trail a little bit faster and maybe perhaps saying a little bit more carelessly and knowing that I'm not going to hit anything and bottom out as dramatically as I would if I were in something that weren't the trail boss and didn't have that extra two inches of lift. So yes, the extra two inches, uh, it looks cool driving around and everything like that, but it also provides a degree of functionality if you're going to be out here doing things like this. And if you're not doing this type of thing every single weekend or doing it for your job or something, it makes sense to save some money and get something more like this Trail Boss model versus paying much, much more to get something like the ZR2 that, yes, would be more luxurious and more comfortable, or you could even step up to something like the GMC Canyon, which kind of comes only in the more premium sort of trims. But if you're someone who just wants to be able to have the ability to do something like this occasionally and 
take your wife and go explore a trail like this, then having the Trail Boss gives you the abilities to do that, not only with the lift, but also having the all-terrain tires equipped from the factory. Nice and easy. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so far no squeaks or rattles or anything like that. Yeah. Steering's been a nice weight. Something you would get in one of the more advanced trims would be a, a trail camera system. And it will be a bit unfortunate to not have something forward facing because right now you can see we just got the rear camera which you can still bring up while driving but not particularly useful. And the hood on the Colorado is pretty high up. So even myself, five foot 10 person, I'm having trouble seeing what's directly in front of me. So I could see, I don't, I, I'd have to check the build configurator to see if you can option in something like a 360 camera on the Trail Boss, but definitely don't have it equipped here at $41,000. Yeah, big bump there. So you definitely hear it resonating through the cabin, but it's not like it's uh, rattling us to our core necessarily. Not a butt breaker. Right. We are in two-wheel drive right now. We'll see how much of this trail we can do in two-wheel drive, and if it starts getting dicey, we'll shift into four high. This is a very cool, very cool trail. Yeah, yeah it is. I'm looking forward to going up here. Again, fantastic infotainment system here from Chevy. Android Automotive, and we're seeing this mapping system built in right here. If we even wanted to get a little more technical, we could simply go up here, hit, where would that be? Would it be root options? No, maybe not. I, th I thought that was something that you could oh. do with this map, is make it satellite view. Uh, oh, no. oh, those are not the buttons. All right. Interesting. Well, I'll have to look into that. Obviously you can simply switch over to something like your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay, and then satellite. Ah, but I am offline because we don't have any signal. That makes sense. <laughs> so that might have also been, well, we should still have signal on the truck, but I actually prefer using the map just built into the truck generally because it's actually a higher resolution than what you get with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So it's a really nice built-in map. And because it's Google, you got your voice commands built right in. Works nicely. There's a big rut over there. We're going to take it to the side. This is something I like about the mid-size truck market as opposed to big full-size trucks. If we were in a Silverado, I mean, we would really have to be careful coming around the width of some of these trails. I mean, they're not huge. And if someone were to come up and need to pass us, or if we were in a situation like back there where we kind of wanted to meander around something, a mid-size truck just makes so much more sense than one of those giant full-size or especially something like a heavy-duty. I like being able to have something like a Colorado all right, well, here's another big uh, uh, example of how it would be nice to have a trail cam, but we're just gonna take it, go in on one side and then back up. Even with that air dam in front, not hitting anything. What, what was that? I couldn't even see because of the hood. It was just like a big broken piece of the piece uh, of the road. Uh, yeah, a big hole. I wouldn't even know how big that was because it handled it kind of well. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, I prefer to highlight aspects like this of this type of vehicle rather than go and show you, oh, let's take it to extreme off-roading and show you you know, how much you can push it before it starts to fail. I just don't think majority of people buying trucks are using it in that way. I think a lot more often you just wanna know that you have the ability to come out and do maybe trails like this, even if it's not something you do all the time, but you can do it and not mess your shiny new truck up by doing it. And you want to be able to take your wife or your kids or whomever out or husband and have a good time doing it and not make them nervous that, you know, are we going to damage this thing that we just uh, financed for five years or something? Switching over to this 2.7 liter four cylinder motor is nice for kind of the slower speed off-roading because it makes so much torque that you really don't have to lean on the engine too much in order to get it up doing what you need it to do. Seems as though we have lost asphalt and we are strictly over to dirt now. Up we go. Wow. I actually got the opportunity to do some really intense off-roading with the GMC Canyon, the cousin to this truck. 
and it was remarkably cap capable. We did some steep climbs, some really tight trails, pinstriped those things up bad, and again, similar engine, technically a slightly higher output, but same horsepower figures, slightly bit more torque, and you just don't have to push into it the way you'd have to in a naturally aspirated engine, even like the 3.6 from the previous gen Colorado. <laughs> Oof. Has been a bit of a bumpy ride. <laughs> Being a, an unladen truck with more rudimentary suspension, it definitely has that bounce to it, but it feels robust. Like I said, it's not rattly, it's just you really feel that, that rear getting loose. But despite not having much weight over the rear end, we're still in two-wheel drive and have had no issues with traction. Thank God. <laughs> One of the things I like about having all-terrain tires on a vehicle, doing this sort of thing, is not necessarily uh, the straight-up traction ability to keep you from getting stuck. It's actually being able to slow yourself down and handle in a situation of an emergency. Say, for example, I was kind of driving along here, you know, decently quick and someone comes around that corner fast, being able to slow down and actually grip myself really quickly there, or even more importantly, when we're coming back down and we're fighting gravity, the all-terrain tires are gonna be able to grip into the sand and dirt and slow us down more confidently than simply an all-season tire. I mean, yeah, you'd be able to probably climb up this fine with the all-season tire, but again, it's an insurance. It's just like running winter tires on your car if you're driving somewhere in the snow. Yeah, you can get by with all seasons, but in an emergency type situation, that's when you're gonna be glad that you opted for the proper rubber. Interestingly, no telescoping steering wheel here on the Colorado, at least on this trim. It only goes up and down and makes that very interesting ratcheting sound <laughs> when you do that. So uh, hopefully you like where the steering wheel is at. We do have a few different gauge cluster displays here for off-roading information. Bring those up, click through, media screen. There we go, we've got steering angle, transfer case, our pitch and roll, and then kind of showing how much power is going to all the wheels. Just kind of fun to see what you're, what you're dealing with. And I know we've got a few sections up here that we can get kind of steep on. And, we can see what sort of angles we get in the truck. Some really big <laughs> bumps and holes and, and kind of whoops that we've hit with this. And again, not a single bit of scraping. I've really been impressed with that. I was a little bit worried that we might have a little bit of issue with that front air dam, which can be easily removed. But if you're doing a good amount of regular commuting with a truck like this, and you're going to want to keep it on and see those fuel economy benefits. And it's good to know that if you do take it off, hit something like that back there, you know, a trail like this, that it's not going to impede. And I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's just a piece of plastic. If you do mess it up, just get a new one off eBay. Look at that. That's a cool view. This is not, however, what I thought Charlie meant by, do you want to go drive on some cool trails? <laughs> but it is a very beautiful view and a very neat. Let's see, how about right here? Just a little tiny bit of slippage, but huh. no problemo. Huh. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. Having a truck like this enables you to go out and see things like this. I don't know how well it'll come up on camera, but some remarkable views. And it's also so quiet. Looking out over this way, I'm pretty sure that's LA off in the distance. There's no way you'd be able to see that here, but there's kind of haze. Actually, I think it's maybe that direction. Let's look at a compass or something. Hey, let's check this out with the truck. Go ahead and lift up the, the seat here. This, there's like a little lever and then it pops up. Oh, it's just the one seat. Yeah. 
Pull that up. Pull this? Mm hmm Okay. And then, come around over here. Move this and this. Pop this one up. Under sweet storage. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Look at the two things that are were under there. Are we having a picnic? Yeah. <laughs> I was like trying to be cool for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick. We have to watch out for rattlesnakes. Okay. Yeah, all the viewers got to see me uh, plan out your picnic. When? Earlier in the video. That's so cute. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. So, I was thinking we'd sit in the truck bed, but it might be a tad dusty. I don't know, it's not too bad actually in there. It's just the side rails that are real bad. But we have got a picnic blanket. I leaned up against it. <laughs> Did you get marked? Yeah, I marked it. Yeah. Got the trail boss pretty dirty. But yeah, we're going to possibly can go even further up to the very tippy top there. Or maybe up here or something and have ourselves a little mountain picnic. Cute. Yeah. And watch the sunset maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's almost about that time. Neat. Is that the ocean that way? I think so. Cool. Wow. All right, we're back down in civilization. Had a nice picnic and stayed until the sunset. Some beautiful views up there and actually had a little bit of an exciting drive down. The sun had set, it was dark, and a forest fire had actually started up at the top there. It seems to be decently contained, but we actually had to pull over onto the side of the trail as full-size fire trucks were going up that road that we went up there. So that was pretty exciting. It was just a good example of uh, how having a vehicle like this enables you to go and do cool things rather than just sort of sit at home you know so yeah some people might have pickup trucks or off-roady type of vehicles and be like oh they never use them for real things but even if you go out occasionally and do something like that it enhances your life it, it adds experiences but today we're just driving around normal style running a few errands and the Colorado does a pretty darn good job at that I did do the highway fuel economy test last night and a few of its weaknesses were pointed out to me, most of it being the seat comfort. I noticed immediately when I got in this truck that the seat bottom is tight. I feel there, there's not enough room for my two thighs. I'm not a very large person. There's not enough room for my two thighs to sit in between the bolstering of the seats. So I'm kind of up on the bolsters and it's, it's tight. And then I found out after sitting in the seat for an hour and a half last night during the fuel economy test that they're not that supportive. So I don't mind the material of the cloth seats, but the seat support is not really there. And I've noticed that with GM trucks from the current generation Silverado compared to the previous one, and then also now this this uh, Colorado, that they're they're skimping on seat comfort. And that's a really that's a shame because if if there's anything that you should have right, it's the seats. In fact, as much as I absolutely love this big infotainment screen and, and the technology suite in this truck, I would give that up in order to just have better seat comfort here in these base trucks. I also did some looking around in the build configurator, and if you get this truck without the one of the convenience packages, you don't even get cruise control. Isn't that crazy that they're selling a, a truck in, in today's day and age, 2023, and you literally, you get this 11 inch excellent Android Automotive touchscreen, but you don't get cruise control. It, it just seems weird to me there. I mean, I, I understand that you got to do some cost cutting to make vehicles affordable. I'm all for affordable vehicles, but not having cruise control, that's pretty crazy to me. Fortunately, this one does have it, and even though it's not adaptive, it, it works well. I'm okay with that. We also found out coming down the mountain that the headlights, eh, not particularly bright. If you pony up for something like a, a higher trim level, you get LED headlights. I'm, I would hope those are quite a bit better these halogens they're just they're just okay they illuminated the trail and not much else but you can pony up and get big off-road light bars built in and everything and I, I could certainly see doing that again only if you're gonna spend a lot of time out with uh, doing that type of stuff with the truck and that's what you got to remember is 
a lot of these things, they upsell you, but how often are you actually gonna use them? And are they gonna regularly improve your life? Then go ahead, pony up. Like I would pay extra to get a wireless device charger in this truck because I would use that daily. But I would not pay extra in order to get the more advanced shocks and, and the light bars and everything because realistically, I just wouldn't use that very often. And the few times I do, I'm willing to have it just not be quite as good, save money for other things. Fortunately, most of the meat and potatoes with this truck, they did well. The eight-speed transmission's great, the engine is great. Overall, the ergonomics make sense. I thought I would find myself reaching for the fan knob in order to adjust volume more regularly, but I don't. I honestly don't even mind the rubber steering wheel that much. The shifter works well. I, I did totally forget to mention the drive modes <laughs> going up and down uh, the, the hills. Technically, we have an off-road mode and a terrain mode. Didn't use them. Truck did totally fine in normal mode. I'm so used to just going and driving my truck and not screwing around with drive modes. We do have to run to uh, Rite Aid right now, so you'll get, see again how well the system works. Okay, Google, take me to Rite Aid. Got it, Rite Aid 0.7 miles away. No cuts, look how easy that is. Quick, immediate, and if I don't press anything, it's just simply gonna start. It knows that I wanna go to the closest one. I could click more results or I could tell it to take me to a different location, but it just goes right there. And then you got that big high def screen. It's again, really cool that they give that to you in the base truck like this. What's really interesting to me is the previous generation Colorado went on for a while and by the end, last year or so, it did feel pretty darn dated. It was simple inside, the screen was small. Everything worked totally fine. I still liked the truck, but it seemed like an older truck. And it's so cool how much of a blast from the future this generation feels like. I mean, yes, there's cheapness about it, but having this big screen, as well as the digital screen in front of me, and the much modernized interior layout, really rockets the Colorado forward here into the 21st century, I'll say, or, or the, the 2020s. And yeah, maybe by the time this model is six or seven years old, there will be entirely new setups and cars and this will feel old again. But I think somebody upgrading and getting this generation Colorado is thoroughly going to feel like they have a new truck. And it's not going to be like, well, you know, there's a lot of things I miss from my old one. I mean, other than maybe some seat comfort, I think this is a, an across the board upgrade for the Colorado. And that's not to say you need to rush out and buy one. Like I said, I, I do still plenty like the old Colorado. In fact, uh, I kind of prefer the styling a little bit of the old Canyon compared to these new ones. But I think the interior goes a long way. And yeah, this is, uh, it's been a nice truck to drive around. It really has been. It's been easier to drive around in city type driving than I expected. Ooh, one thing though with modern technology that has been frustrating me a lot is the automatic emergency braking lights, the, the crash warning, if you will, has been going off accidentally multiple, multiple times while I've been filming, when I've not been filming, driving under a bridge, random situations, it beeps, shuts the music off and flashes in front of me. And it's like, oh my gosh, come on. I, I, I actually think something is not functioning properly with this specific truck that I'm in because yeah, it's, that's, there's no way that's proper. But unlike a lot of cars where you can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic emergency braking, you can't with this truck. So take that, uh, hope, hopefully <laughs> it's just a weird fluke and it's not something that you're regularly gonna get with these new Colorados. Another thing is the six speaker sound system is surprisingly good in this car. Chevy stepping it up a little bit, I think, and I don't suspect the one extra speaker Bose system is really gonna sound that much better. Might have a little bit better bass, but you'd be surprised at how decent a lot of your simpler music sounds in this car. If you do wanna see more on that, check the link in the description. We've got two different sound videos, but yeah, I, I've been totally happy listening to my music on the system. And I know I've spent a lot of the videos saying, oh, well, you, you get the Trail Boss if you don't need all that other, you know, you don't need the ZR2 and, and your money goes a lot further. I did spend some time in the build configurator looking at how much a ZR2 costs, how much a Z71 costs, and it's, it's more, it's a good, it's a big step up, don't get me wrong. It's something like eight to $10,000, depending on how you look at it, to get up to the ZR2. 
but you are gonna get a much more flushed out vehicle and one that is remarkably smoother and nicer to drive off-road. So I'd say if you have the means and you go off-roading more than once a month, it was probably worth stepping up and getting the ZR2. But if you're someone who mostly just wants the looks and you might go off-road maybe once a month, but it's really not that common and you're not taking other people with you, you're not driving fast over bumpy off-roads or anything, then this Trail Boss is gonna do everything you need and more and do it well and save you money all at the same time. Take that money and put it into the convenience packages. Get yourself some, some accessories in here, some wireless charging, cruise control for gosh sake. Why is that so loud? I, I I don't know what I did to make that notification volume so loud, but it is freaking me out. I I think maybe it's related to my phone's volume or something like that, but that was the the message, the noise, just for getting a text message. It's, it's too much. I've never had that happen in a car. So there it is, our now good and dirty Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. I think a lot of people are going to be stepping up to this trim because it gets you a cool looks and decent capability without you having to pay for a lot of the unnecessary stuff that you might really not use. So I appreciate Chevy doing that. All I would do is I would throw on proxy key, make the seats a little bit more comfortable, and then I think you've got a pretty darn good truck on your hands. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see a whole lot more on the Colorado, check the link in the description. I've got a lot of videos for you there, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, be the boss of the trail on. Thank mm -hmm. you.